All right guys, here we are in Mike's thousand square foot basement again. I had another question about the sump pump that we used with this particular waterproofing job, okay? It's kind of dark, but I'll, I'll show you if you can see that. What we've got here is a, is a sump pump basin. In order to put that in, we have to dig down three or four feet, fill the hole with gravel, tie in some pipes or, or poke some holes in the bottom, depending on the type of system that we're using in order for the groundwater to actually be picked up by the sump pump and ejected outside. Okay, in this particular method, um, we've used holes in the bottom of the tank as, as, a, um, as a method to pick up that groundwater. And the pipe that you see here running straight up is a piece of ABS drainage pipe, it's inch and a half, right? Followed by a check valve right above my fingers. Okay, that check valve will prevent the surge of water coming back down from the pipe as soon as the pump has finished ejecting whatever's in the basin. There's always gonna be five liters of water, 10 liters of water in that pipe from the point of the pump to the point that it actually exits the house, because in this case, the run is about 20, 25 feet. Okay, so that's pretty important. You gotta have your, you gotta have your check valve in or you'll have a surging of the pump because all that water coming back into the basin will trigger the pump to kick in again. And it's a constant flow because that water never actually leaves the home. Okay, now this pit here takes quite a bit of excavation to get down three or four feet plus your gravel and that kind of thing uh, would take somebody a, you know, a good day to dig, um, depending on the groundwater. And especially in this case, when we had really high groundwater, the hole would continually fill up with water and with muck and with debris. It was, uh, it was pretty tricky on this one for sure. But uh, within a day or two, you should be able to put your own sump pump in. Now over on the left-hand side here, it's also got its own dedicated pump circuit. Okay, now that pump circuit's really important, especially if you rely on this pump to keep water out of your basement, because that circuit there, if it ever trips with something like a, like a kitchen appliance, like a toaster or anything like that, or um, maybe while you're away on vacation, you wouldn't know. And you wouldn't know until that water actually backs up and comes up and over the lid of the sump basin, right? Then you've got water in your basement, and now you're redoing all your floors, you're cutting your drywall back up, that's pretty important. In this case, we've got a weeping system that actually works and the sump pump is a backup to that. So we don't need any battery backup here per se. However, for anybody that is relying on a sump pump, I recommend a really good quality pump. I recommend a really good quality installation, right? I recommend you test it every now and again, make sure it's functioning the way it should. And I also recommend a battery backup. The battery backup is almost like a car battery that would kick in in the event that the water level is rising and there's no hydro to the house. Okay, this is really important, especially in the spring months when you have that, that freeze thaw, water's being driven into the ground, it's coming up underneath the property, right? And you really wanna keep that water out of your basement suite. In the meantime, if you've got any other questions, hit me on rwcarinvestment.com. You can follow our blog, you can email me at info at rwcarinvestment.com or you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter.